Hey there, fellow plant lovers. As winter sets in and everything outside gets chilly, many of us find ourselves trying to keep our tropical plants happy indoors. But as winter winds down, we start to figure out which plants will stick around for the long haul and which ones might not make the cut because they're a bit too picky. I'm Marina, and I've made it my mission to create a cozy plant paradise right here in my home in Germany. Today, I'm thrilled to take you on a tour of my winter plant room. I'll share my ups and downs and spill the beans on how I've managed to keep my indoor jungle thriving during the colder months. Plus, I'll dish on which plants, despite being rare and tricky, have proven to be super tough. And which ones I'm saying goodbye to because they just haven't gotten the hang of indoor living after a few winters. Step into my plant paradise. As we walk into my snug plant room, you'll be greeted by a burst of lush greenery. Each plant has its own special spot, soaking up just the right amount of sunlight and artificial light they need to stay happy during winter. Let's start by admiring the stunning Monstera deliciosa variegata. Despite its tropical roots, it's really taken a liking to the cooler German climate. I've managed to propagate new plants from the mother plant. And now you'll find little Monstera sprouts in almost every room of my house. By giving them plenty of artificial light and protecting them from drafts and dry air from the heating system, they've continued to thrive and show off their beautiful fenestrations, even in winter. As for Monstera adansoni and Monstera epipremnum, every winter they tend to yellow and produce long leafless stems. Neither additional lighting nor repotting nor support for upward vertical growth seems to help prevent the loss of their decorative appeal during the winter. Next up, we've got these gorgeous Phalaenopsis orchids, adding a pop of color to my green room. With a little TLC, these exotic beauties can bloom like crazy even in winter. Most of my orchids have sent out flower spikes this January. While I haven't been too picky about which varieties I've bought, some of the Oncidiums have been a bit of a challenge. I'm not sure when they'll bloom again, especially since some of them lost all their roots right after replanting and haven't even rooted yet, despite my best efforts with the potting mix and leaf fertilization. In the center of the composition is Degamawara Purple Princess. Least of all, did I expect it to rebloom in winter? Degamora is a hybrid between the orchid Genere Brassia, Miltonia, and Odontoglossum. All of its parents are in my collection and are not known for their easy blooming nature. I managed to capture the process, which takes about a day, of the Phalaenopsis Prince Ivanhoe bud unfolding. I started building my orchid collection specifically with such large flowered showy hybrids. Do you know what other flower can bloom for three months under the weak winter sun? However, I'm still struggling to establish a bond with all kinds of Cattleyas and Onchidiums. Cattleyas show no signs of life in winter, and although one initiated a bud on a new growth, it dried out the new flower spike, taking care of Phalaenopsis orchids. I noticed that transparent pots are indeed very convenient and important for these plants. From my side, I can observe the condition of the roots. If they are whitish, it's time to water. If they are greenish, watering should be postponed. And from the plant's perspective, the roots receive natural light, which is important for photosynthesis. While other types of orchids can be hidden in beautiful decorative pots, Phalaenopsis roots are better left visible. Now let me introduce you to my delicate tropical ferns. Keeping the humidity levels just right in winter can be tough, and even with a humidifier and regular misting, these ferns can be a bit finicky. I've carefully chosen fern varieties that are best suited to indoor conditions, but every winter they tend to brown their leaves and it takes them forever to bounce back. While many fern varieties can thrive indoors, some may be more challenging to grow in typical room conditions. Here are a few ferns that were impossible to care for indoors. Brake fern, Terris red, Coniogram emiensis, Golden Zebra Fern, Terris ensiformis, Silver Lace Fern. There are several fern varieties that are well suited for indoor cultivation and can withstand winter conditions without dying off. Here are some recommendations. Boston Fern, Nephrolapis exaltata. 
It can tolerate around 60% humidity and prefers indirect light. Bird's Nest Fern, Asplenium nidus. This fern can adapt to lower light levels and prefers slightly drier soil compared to other fern varieties. Rabbit's Foot Fern, Devalia Fagensis. Named for its furry rhizomes resembling rabbit's feet, this fern adds unique texture to indoor displays. Staghorn fern, Platycerium. They require high humidity and regular misting, which can be challenging indoors. To simplify watering, I prefer to grow them in concealed pots. Blue star fern, Phlebodium aureum. Though beautiful, blue star ferns may lose some of their splendor during winter, but tend to rebound quickly in growth. Let's continue our winter tour through my plant-filled room and take a closer look at what my wrought iron table has to offer in February. There's the flowering Hoya with its petite blooms, filling the room with its fragrance. Next to it, in full bloom, is the African Violet Harmony's Little Stinker, the last survivor from a collection of 200 varieties that has been with me for eight years. Then we have the beautiful decorative foliage of Begonia's Candy Stripe and Black Mamba, alongside Anthurium scherzerianum with its red flowers, and on the bench, there are those with white blooms. They grow slower than the more common Anthurium andrianum. Perhaps I'll conclude our plant inspection for today and continue in the second part, where I'll show you my collection of Ripsilies. Wow, there are just so many amazing plants to explore here. But unfortunately, we've only managed to cover about half of them so far. Don't worry though. I promise to continue this plant room tour in the next installment, where we'll delve into even more fascinating species and care tips. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next part of our botanical adventure. I hope you've enjoyed this peek into my winter plant room and found some inspiration for your own indoor oasis. With the right plants, a little extra care, and some love, you can create your very own tropical paradise right in the middle of winter. Thanks for joining me on this journey and happy planting.